What's up everyone, MK Tom Brady here, and in this video I want to talk about a word that we hear all the time in fighting games. Broken, quote unquote, and this word refers to move, a series of moves, a character as a whole, tactics that are allowed either by the game's engine or by character tools, as being something that is a little too strong and should probably be looked at by the developer and maybe scaled down a bit. The thing is, the definition from this word has changed quite a bit over the years. Broken no longer means something that is actually too strong. It just nowadays means something that's annoying. See, there was a time in which things actually were broken in fighting games and were ridiculously over the top. I mean, in some of these older games, you couldn't even be hit or the match was over. But developers have realized that in the modern era, this kind of stuff really isn't good for the modern competitive environment. So they really had a, a, made a very conscious effort to scale down on these type of things and kind of dial the power level of these aspects of fighting games down a little bit. Yet despite that, you hear more now than ever that everything is broken. You can't go anywhere without hearing this is broke, that is broken. Really what people are mean by this is, it's just really, really annoying. You see, the reason why you hear this more are for two reasons. One, well, not only are there more players, but social media is huge now. People can give their opinion everywhere on every platform and directly direct this opinion to the developer themselves. And game sales are higher than ever. So not only do you have a higher number of competitive players, you have a ton more of casual players which make up 99% of the fighting game audience and sales, the casual players, the you know one to 2,000 that actually make it out to competitive tournaments, that's probably actually less than 1% of the people that buy the game worldwide. Yet it's that 99% that actually get to dictate the game that everyone's gonna play, and that's right, not the 1% that'll stay with the game for five years, the 99% that'll stay with the game for five months. And see, as a casual player, you know, I defend people's right to be casual, but the real problem is they want to kind of walk in between both worlds. I want to be a casual, that's why I don't travel and go to these tournaments, but they also want to feel like the competitive player. So if something's giving them a hard time, guess what? It's annoying, hence, it's broken. See, if you are zoning a little too much, gosh, that's really annoying. Hence, it's broken. Running away a bit too much, that's annoying. That's broken. Maybe you are doing something like, you know, not just defense and zoning. Maybe you're just rushing down a bit too much and it feels too oppressive. Well, that's broken. That should be removed from the game because it's really, really annoying. Command throw characters. My gosh, man, those guys are really irritating because you attack, attack, attack. And then when it's their turn, they're doing mid, unblockable, unbreakable throws. And then I go to avoid that, and they launch me for half my life. Gosh, that's so annoying. Mid command throws, grapplers just shouldn't even exist. And you hear this a lot in NetherRealm games, which they sell the most games, they have the largest casual audience, and they want grapplers removed from fighting games altogether. Just get them out, remove it. Because it's annoying. And this is really where broken has lost its meaning. Now, developers don't really know what's actually broken or what's just difficult. See, as a casual player, if you try to explain to them, hey, it's not broken, maybe it's a bad matchup for you. You just need more experience. Well, how much experience do I need, says the casual? I don't know, maybe 100 games, maybe a little more, maybe 200. Who knows, depends on the matchup, how you learn, etc. What, a few hundred games? That's ridiculous, I'm not a pro player. And you tell the developer, hey, I'll go on social media and just say, do me a solid. Just remove it, problem solved. Or maybe it's, hey, you gotta pick another character. You know, you don't wanna put the time in to learn how to deal with it this way, pick another character. Tilt the odds in your favor. But then you gotta put the time in to get that character up to a competitive level. I don't have time for that, I'm a casual. Just. Once again, go to the developer. Hey, this is really, really annoying. Can you do me a favor? I don't, have, I don't have the time. Can you fast track me and just remove it? And casuals have been asking to be fast tracked for a long time. Execution is too hard. 
oh my gosh, how am I going to make up all this life? Comeback mechanics, because making up all this life that you just lost, that's too hard too. And developers have really been catering to this line of thought, which is why fighting games seem a little more accessible today, seem a little more watered down today. It's because the audience that plays the game the least actually gets to dictate how the game plays more so than the audience that actually stays playing the game for longer periods of time. And there has been a train of thought that says, well, look, they're the 99%. You guys are 1%, less than 1%. You're always going to buy the game no matter what. So no one cares about your complaints about things being taken to a different direction. We're worried about this casual audience. But the thing is that 99%, they're also always going to buy the game also. In fact, both casuals and competitive players will go ahead and buy the next game. The casuals will always do it no matter what. No matter what you do to the game, the casuals will still buy the next game. That 99% will continue to grow and those who are existing or pre-existing will still buy the next one. This is evident in NetherRealm games uh, because, you know, they complained about, you know, one game in MKX. Uh, they complained about the other game in Injustice 2. But then... When MK11 came out, it actually sold more than the previous games that everybody complained about. So even though the casuals were complaining about things that were broken, it still didn't affect the sales. In fact, more people went out and bought the next Mortal Kombat game. So it's not like, oh, you know, wow, we got to change things around because they may not, our sales may dip after this game. It, they don't dip. Sales are not dipping. This casual audience will always go out and buy the next game. So to have a a model of who cares what the 1% think, we're worried about this 99, that 99 is always going to be there. And what you have to understand is that this 99%, this saying is you can't please them all, kind of gets placed at the 1%, the competitive audience. They're the ones always crying, especially in NetherRealm games. You always hear this, oh, you can't please them all. But that should actually be directed to the casual audience, the 99%, and should never be, you can't please them all. The saying should be, you just can't please them. Ever. Period. End of story. Because NRS actually tried this experiment, right? They made, you know, okay, after MK9 and Injustice 2, they tried to, Injustice 1, they tried to take some feedback here, right? Okay, you guys want more faster paced, more offense, go, go, go. Okay, less zoning. So they made MKX. But now, too much offense. Okay, I got you. So then they made Injustice 2. Now, too much defense, too much running away, too much zoning. So, okay, too much offense, that's broken, check. Too much defense, too much running away, too much zoning, that's broken, check. They give you MK11, and then those same casuals say, well, now there's not enough offense, not enough defense, not enough zoning, the game is boring. So it doesn't really matter which way you go. And the funny thing is, these casuals who blasted these previous NRS games, basically demanding a product like the MK11, then left MK11 and went back to those quote-unquote broken games that they swore they would never touch again because now that we got what we want, it's actually boring. Shame on you, NRS. And that's kind of the attitude that the casual audience had. And yet this is the audience that developers are marketing toward. But these guys will always be there. And no matter what you do to the game, the casual players will, regardless of how, even if they could personally design the game, they'll still buy it, play it for a little bit, put it down, come back a few months later, put it down again, come back to check out new content, DLC, expansions, that kind of stuff. But they'll never really stick with the game for the long haul. They don't care about advancing the game. They don't care about the competitive scene. They don't care anything about the game whatsoever outside of their short-sighted enjoyment, which again is fine. But again, the problem is they want to walk in between both worlds. And a lot of times what they find annoying is stuff that gets toned down. You can look at Shiva. Regardless of what the 1% said about Shiva, nobody cared. But then a casual girl cries on stream and all of a sudden we got to do... Uh, 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 they literally did a balance patch mainly just to do Shiva. Uh, a studio who refused to update the game and was probably done saw a girl crying and said, whoa, ho, ho, brother, we better do one more update because this girl is crying. And, you know, we all know the crying girl meme, you know, but she doesn't play the game. They fix Shiva. Is she back on the game playing and grinding the game now that they fix Shiva? 
No. You see, no matter what you do, they don't come back because they don't care. It's just something to play for a little bit and move on. And then the 1%, the competitive audience, they're stuck with the product that people who don't want to stick with the game demanded. Overall, the best thing to do here is really educate the entire fighting game world, especially that 99% casual audience. And you, they have to realize that everyone's everything is annoying to everyone else. And developers have to realize this. Fighting games are annoying. What I want to do is annoying to you. What you want to do is annoying to me. That's how it is for everybody. Everybody's stuff is annoying to everybody else. But for what you want to do to exist, what they want to do also has to exist. And that's really where people, that 99% kind of don't really understand things. Fighting games are meant to be annoying, meant to be frustrating, meant to be challenging. That frustration of, gosh, I just can't get around this. But when you put the time in and you finally do, you feel great and you feel that sense of accomplishment and you're like, man, it was a tough journey, but that was really fun. The challenge, the frustration of dealing with this stuff, the, of beating challenging tactics and opponents, that's what makes fighting games enjoyable. If you remove that, fighting games no longer have a challenge and they get boring really fast. People quit them, they stop buying them and studios stop making them. That's the whole point of the fighting game, to be frustrating, to be extremely challenging, to beat that guy who just annoys you nonstop. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to beat this guy. That's what fighting games are. And developers have to realize when people say something is quote unquote broken, that they really need to look at it and make sure it actually is, or if it's just annoying. And you don't get that by listening to the 99%, you get that by taking the feedback of the 1%. You know that audience that you disregard and think doesn't matter? They matter a whole lot. And in future games coming up, hopefully that's the audience that actually gets listened to. Imagine it like this. Imagine you're a player. You join an exhibition and something beats you and you say you know what this is annoying and you have the mystical power to have the guy who runs the exhibition just remove whatever tactic that is from the game and then you come back a week later hey and you beat the guy cool but you don't really have any accomplishment you didn't play all week you didn't practice at all they just removed what was beating you and oh yeah i overcame it but you didn't really you didn't get that sense of accomplishment well, four, five, six, seven weeks down the line, you're just losing, it gets removed, then you win. Losing, it gets removed, then you win. You lose that sense of accomplishment, you get bored, and you quit. And then one day, someone says, okay, well, this guy's beating me, take away what he does. Now you're bored because when you win, you have no sense of accomplishment, and you get bored because everything in the game gets taken out because... Everything gets, that's annoying gets taken out of the game. So the game loses a fun factor. When you win, you have no sense of accomplishment. It just wouldn't be fun. But this is exactly what you are asking for in general, you know, based on what you find annoying. The best route is developers need to be more conscious of this. And I think, you know, in general, educating the mass audience, the difference between what's just annoying and what's broken you know, needs to be more of a main focus. I think developers should be able to do that. They should use social media for purposes of education the same way that these casual players use social media to complain about everything in every game always. We're basically entering the next generation of fighting games. PS5 is out, the Xbox, you know, X and S series are out, and the next era of fighting games are coming in. Street Fighter VI is gonna come out sooner rather than later. NRS is working on a new title. At some point, we're going to get a new Tekken. You know, I don't know when that will be. But in general, these next generation of fighting games are going to come out. The thing is, what will developers do? Will they continue you know, on the path that they've been going on so far? Or will they say, you know what? Let's go ahead and listen more to that competitive audience. And we'll work on you know, maybe using our content creators to educate this casual audience a little more so that now they can understand the clear difference between something that's just annoying or something that's just broken and has to be done, uh, dealt with. And that I think will help the FGC grow overall because the real truth is it's not about taking that 
99% and 1% and kind of separating them. It's about what can we do to turn that 99 and 1% to 98% and 2% and then 97% and 3%. What do we do to cross them over to that side? You know, to where they under, oh, now I see, now I understand. Now I see the difference between what's, how you, how to deal with stuff, et cetera, or what's actually too strong. And I think that should be the focus rather than just, okay, we'll just cave in every single time, you know, but will this happen? I'm not sure and only time will tell. Thanks for watching.